Waters are fast moving. Unlike other big rallies, the a bit earlier at about 7 a.m., a group from the Coast Guard. Welcome to Hashtag PHBook 2013. Today on Rappler. The ex aide of former President Estrada is reportedly under pressure to testify in the pork barrel scam. Malacanang investigates the Energy Regulatory Commission chief for approving a steep power rate hike. And Thai opposition wants Sunday's snap elections nullified. Hello. I'm Natasha Gutierrez, sitting in for Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. The former social secretary of former President Joseph Estrada could be the key that directly links Senators Jingoy Estrada, Juan Ponce Enrile, and his former chief of staff, Gigi Reyes, to the pork barrel scam. The officials are implicated in the misuse of the Pork Barrel or Priority Development Assistance Fund, allegedly masterminded by businesswoman Janet Limnapolis. Ruby Tuason, who faces plunder charges before the ombudsman, is said to be under pressure from family members to turn herself in. She snuck out of the country after the pork barrel scandal broke out, but with her plunder charges, the prospects of Tuason being extradited is not far-fetched. Levy Baligod, lawyer for whistleblowers in the pork barrel scam, says Tuason's testimony, quote, can be enough to pin down the three, referring to Estrada, Enrile, and Reyes. Tuason has had dealings with Napolis herself. According to whistleblower Ben Hurloy, Tuason supposedly got 1.5 million pesos in commissions for a 37.5 million peso pork barrel allocation of Senator Estrada and 4.2 million pesos for supposed rebates in Estrada's pork barrel downloaded to the Department of Agriculture. It turned out that for the years 2006 and 2007, Tuazon was acting as Napolis's conduit to Senator Enrile, doing the same task she did for Estrada. Based on Luis Ledger, Tuazon was getting Enrile's rebates ranging from 1.9 million pesos to 20 million pesos. The Manila Electric Company, or Meralco, defends its controversial price hike before the Supreme Court Tuesday. Moralco earlier said it was just collecting from its customers the high charges from the wholesale electricity spot market, or WESM. But petitioners say Moralco helped jack up prices in the spot market by ordering the sale of its contracted power with power generation company Thermo Mobile Inc. at high prices. During the oral arguments, Justice Antonio Carpio asks attorney Victor Lazetin why Moralco bought power at 62 pesos per kilowatt from the spot market. He also points out Meralco was both buyer and seller at the time. Meralco says it asked Thermo Mobile to offer high rates as a matter of strategy to make sure that there would be no takers because it needed the contracted power supply. Meralco also blamed government-controlled power generator, power sector assets and liabilities management, corporation, or PSOM. Lawmakers say power prices could have been brought down if PSOM operated the Malaya Thermal Power Plant. Responding to calls for her removal, Malacanang says it's investigating Energy Regulatory Commission Chair Zenaida Dukot. On January 23, Akbayan filed a complaint urging President Benigno Aquino to remove Dukot from office for, quote, gross neglect of duty and incompetence in protecting the interests of the power consumers. Under Dukot, the ERC approved Meralco's steep power rate hike. Moralco said it was forced to raise prices because of the scheduled shutdown of the Malampaya plant, which suspiciously coincided with the closing of other power sources. Dukot, who enjoys a fixed term after being appointed by former President Gloria Arroyo, ignores calls for her to resign. Supreme Court justices deliberate on the controversial cyber cybercrime law Tuesday, but decide to postpone issuing a verdict. Although the law was on Tuesday's agenda, court insiders say the voting turned complicated. The justices need another session next week to rule on the matter. In deciding on the constitutionality of the law, the justices will try to seek a balance between fundamental freedoms and government control. The court started hearing oral arguments on the law last year and stopped the implementation following 15 petitions against it. Media organizations hit its ambiguous provisions in online libel and the takedown clause, which allows authorities to take down online content without a court warrant. 
The National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, looks forward to a favorable decision, saying it will help in law enforcement and prosecution against illegal online activity. This comes following reports on the growing cash for cyber sex scheme in the Philippines that targets mostly minors. An international advocacy group says the Philippines lost $410 billion in illicit trade from 1960 to 2011. Global Financial Integrity, or GFI, says $133 billion in outflows and $277 billion in inflows mean so much trade goes unreported. GFI Managing Director Tom Cardamoni says the Philippines has continually ranked very high in money flowing in and out over the last several years. He adds there appears to be a correlation between corruption and money flow. From our perspective, this is a crisis situation for this country. Uh, and without addressing it uh, uh, in the immediate term, um, uh, it's unclear uh, where the economy is going to go from here with that kind of tax loss. Bureau of Internal Revenue Chief Kim Inara says the need to solve smuggling is a problem that trickles down to the country's poor. If we are not able to address smuggling, we cannot have industry. If we don't have industry, we cannot create jobs. If we cannot create jobs, poverty will remain the same. So it's important that we... Thailand's opposition wants to nullify Sunday's snap elections and dissolve the ruling party. Embattled Prime Minister Ying Luck Shinawatra called the polls in a bid to end the rallies, plunging Thailand in political turmoil. Protesters blocked off close to 10,000 polling stations, with several million voters unable to vote. The latest move by the opposition comes as the United States warned against any moves to stage a military coup. The U.S. is a major ally of the Ying Luck government. Ying Luck's government currently faces a slew of legal challenges, including alleged corruption on a rice subsidy scheme. The opposition cons considers Ying Luck a puppet of her ousted brother Taksin, who they believe still wields influence even in exile. Let's now look at Rappler's wrap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number 4, the European Union, or EU, says corruption costs its economy at least 120 billion euros annually. The BBC reports it's roughly equivalent to the EU's annual budget. A study shows the Balkan states have the highest levels of bribery and the UK lowest. At number five, the Philippines is among the Southeast Asian countries where tobacco companies enjoy influence over policies affecting their industry. With a score of 71, the Philippines ranks third in the Tobacco Industry Interference Index. This indicates the Philippines' failure to implement a global treaty on tobacco control. The index found a high level of unnecessary government interaction with the tobacco industry, like corporate social responsibility activities. And at number 9, Facebook is not yet entirely uncool. The Pew Research Center says that because of the fear of missing out, teens are still glued on the popular social network despite its aging user base. Facebook turns 10 Tuesday and boasts of more than half of the U.S. population on it. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Wrap. For our social media post of the day, as a social news network, Rappler celebrates Facebook's 10th anniversary via hashtag FB Throwback. Our followers share why they joined the world's biggest social network. Hanna Bajado Agulio says, I joined Facebook on August 21, 2008. I was a college freshie then and I joined the social media because it was becoming a trend and slowly Friendster was becoming obsolete. Pauline Alcera tweets that she had to vacate Friendster because mom was already knowing the ins and outs. And Jerica Amandam says her favorite Facebook games were Mafia Wars, Vampire Wars and Farmville. The Philippines opponents for the FIBA World Cup are no longer a mystery. Gilas Pilipinas is in Group B and will face Senegal, Puerto Rico, Argentina, Greece, and Croatia in the preliminary round. Argentina is the best team in Group B. They are currently ranked third overall and could be headlined by NBA star Manu Ginobili. The drop puts the 24 countries participating in the World Cup into four groups. Speaking to FIBA after the draw, Philippine head coach Chot Reyes says, quote, 
It is a tough group, but we relish it and we are going to prepare very hard. He adds, we would love to get to the final 16. That would be a huge victory not only for our team, but the entire Filipino nation. The preliminary round will take place from August 30 to September 4, while the final round will be played in Barcelona and Madrid from September 6 to 14. The much-talked-about musical Wicked is in Manila. Filipino theater fans flock to its gala night in costumes. Wicked is based on a book written by Gregory Maguire. It's a take on the life and times of Alphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West from Al Frank Baum's Wizard of Oz. G. Tanji reports. I'm here at the CCP for the gala night for Wicked, the biggest blockbuster musical to come to the Philippines. Dancing through life, down at the Oza. Wicked finally opens in Manila to a full house. Hardcore fans of the musical attended the gala dressed in their Emerald City costumes in support of the Australian-based touring company. My family and I also dressed up for the occasion with our very own Glinda and Fierro in tow. Local theater actors Robbie Zialcita and Leroy De La Fuente, last seen on stage for Repertory Philippines, the producers, also got into the wicked spirit. It is the first musical I fell in love with. It is the first musical that wanted me, uh, that made me uh, want to become a theater actor. You can see the standing ovation and, and people really enjoyed it. And, and bravo to them. Lunchbox Theatricals producer James Kundal says bringing shows like Wicked to Manila took many years, but seeing the response from the Philippine audience makes it worth it. I mean, the, the audience here is better than London or the West End, I can tell you. They understand what's happening on stage. They're very, they're very musically savvy. Pinky Amador says the Australian cast is going all out for the Filipinos. Oh, I can really say that they're take, pulling out all the stops for the Filipino audience and you can tell that the audience just loves them and is giving them such a great welcome. Behind the spectacular okay, set and the dazzling costumes, Wicked's message really resonates with the audience. Okay. We think that a lot of people can actually, people who are different, born different, and they know they're different, they can relate to her character. Coca-Cola's It's Beautiful ad draws controversy after airing during the Super Bowl Wednesday, Manila time. The ad features a version of the patriotic song America the Beautiful, sung in English and a variety of languages. It includes a line in Filipino sung by a girl named Leilani, who sang the Filipino version of the line above the fruited plain. Some netizens express outrage over the multilingual version, saying an American patriotic song can't be sung in a different language. But some say the ad celebrates the cultural diverse, culturally diverse American population. Every story on Rappler has a mood meter, which gives you eight emotions to choose from. Click how you feel and your vote comes down to the mood navigator in the middle of the front page, which crowdsources the mood of the day. It also gives you the top 10 stories with the most clicks. Let's check out today's mood navigator. A look at the mood navigator shows three different colors. Let's check out the smallest circle here to the right. This red circle is a story on alleged rice smuggler arrested after Senate hearing. This, of course, refers to David Bangayan. This has 67% of readers feeling angry and 19% feeling happy. Over to the left, a related story, although this one makes people feel a different mood. Duterte on smuggler Bangayan. I will gladly kill him. This has 74% of readers feeling happy and 10% feeling inspired. And lastly, the green circle right in the middle, the news, it, it was just in our newscast, debated Coca-Cola's Super Bowl ad features Filipino language. Although this ad was controversial, 58% of our readers say they feel happy, while 14% say they are amused. All these stories, especially this one right in the middle, contribute to the mood of the day. Today, most people are happy. That's Rappler's newscast for today, Tuesday, February 4, 2014. Visit Rappler.com and watch her newscast Monday to Friday. 
Tell us how you feel in our mood meter and help us crowdsource the mood of the day. I'm Natasha Gutierrez. As we say at Rappler, tomorrow begins today.